Welcome to this episode of What Sam Said. And to our new subscribers, thank you so much for partnering with us on this journey. You can visit www.samuelwaynewest.com to watch our previously recorded videos on What Sam Said, as well as order a copy of our new book, A Promise Kept. Let's jump right into the continuation of As He Is, So Are We. We're told in the book of Revelation chapter 12, 11, that they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. So I wanted to share a couple of my testimonies tonight. And I've always believed that I can learn from you and that you can learn from me. And so the one that I will share first happened on a particular Saturday some years ago. We had Saturday prayer. And so prayer leaders prayed an hour each from eight until four in the afternoon. So on the particular Saturday, it was my day to pray. My shift was from two to 3 p.m. As I was standing in the infant room and I was praying over the outline that had been given to us, I looked up and I heard on the inside of me, do you see how fast those cars are going down the road? And I silently said yes on the inside of me. And the answer that came was this, that's just how fast people are dropping into hell each day. And I sat there a little while longer and I just continued to focus on car after car, after car, I mean minivans, I mean small cars, larger cars, you know, family cars, luxury cars. There were a couple of big rig trucks that came by, some city vehicles, and I thought those trucks represent families. They represent our friends, our co-workers, and our neighbors. And so for those who've been called to pray, for those who've been called to intercede for the lost, know that the work that you do is not in vain. And and it, and it kind of startled me that, you know, this thing is real. The fact that they were just going by just like that. And to think that just like that, there may be someone that we know that's going into hell because they don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I know that not everybody can, can hear everybody's testimony. There are certain things that, 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 that you shouldn't tell because Mark 4 and 33 said that Jesus share the word with them as they were able to hear it. So there will be some people that won't have ears to hear your testimony, but they'll have ears to be listening to tell something about what you did that they can use against your character. So always be mindful that when you share, that you're sharing something that you believe will be able to help someone in their law and their walk with the Lord. And so I ask God to forgive me for just kind of standing there that Saturday. I started to kind of daydream and kind of lost my focus. So I'm just asking you, there may have been times in your life where you've asked the Spirit of God to to forgive you for something that you may have done. And, and so that has caused you now not to want to share a testimony, not to want to give your story. And there are people who are struggling. There are people who are listening to this message that are struggling right now, and they need to hear that you came out, that you were an overcomer, and that the blood of Jesus did exactly what it was ordained and destined to do. We have survivors who are listening to this message. You survive what you won't tell, and we need to make sure that we are not allowing our testimony to be stifled out of fear. I can learn from your experiences, and then you can learn from mine. I remember um, li listening to a minister and he talked about, you know, the, the blood of Jesus and the word of God. And I'm reminded of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 in the Living Bible that says this, For whatever God says to us is full of power. It is sharper than the sharpest dagger, cutting swift and deep into our innermost thoughts and desires with all of our parts, exposing us for what we really are. That's the word of God. And I'm saying, you know, yep, there have been some times where we have been wide open. There have been some times where we've been cut, where we've been exposed. And the, the, the word has shown us areas that we need to repent of and, and the roads that we need to avoid. The ones with the obvious bridges out signs that say, you know, bridge out, do not enter. As well as those roads that may be hid by our own, our own lust and our desires that other folks don't see. But we see it on the inside of us. What Sam said, this is not a competition. We in and of ourselves are no match for the devil. The enemy does not play fair. 1 Corinthians 15 and 10 in the Amplified says this, But by the remarkable grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not without effect. In fact, I worked harder than all of the apostles, though it was not I, 
but the grace of God, his unmerited favor and blessing, which was with me. The King James Version reads this way, but by the grace of God, I am what I am and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Now, the message version is the one that, that got me to go to just kind of get myself in check. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, 9, 10, and 11 in the message version says it this way. But because God was so gracious, so very generous, here I am. And I'm not about to let his grace go to waste. Again, because God was so gracious, so very generous, here I am. And I'm not about to let his grace to go to waste. And I thought... So is that what happens sometimes? We we, we get so content and, and, and live in a lukewarm life that, that all that God has done for us and all that he's done for our family and all the things that he's delivered us from, that that his grace can go to waste. I mean, it, it, uh, am I saying that there are people whose name are tied to Sam West and tied to your name that, that we are to minister to, that we are at the red lights of their lives supposed to be the one that will give them a word of freedom and deliverance? Am I saying that who, who wants to be the person where God's grace is wasted on you? Who is the person among you that is not thankful that you've not been exposed? Who is the person among you that's listening that is thankful that his blood has covered and kept you? Who that's listening among you, I know I am, but both my hands and my feet are up, that, that if you're not thankful that he didn't choose door number three of your life to open the door. So it's, it's time for us to check ourselves. We've heard things about other people and you know wonder what happened things were going for so well for them they were living their best life then everything changed what used to work for you now no longer works try as you might you're using the arm of the flesh to do what only the grace of god is able to do in your life you thought it was something that you possess now you plotting for a promotion where you used to be praying for one what am i saying don't let his grace be wasted on you he has delivered us for a divine purpose. There is an assignment with your name on it. Do you mean it could have, would have, it should have been me if it wasn't for the blood? It's just not a song. You, you mean that, that that is a reality that people have experienced? Do you mean that his grace can be lifted off of my life? Do you mean that if I'm ashamed of Christ and his words now that according to Luke 9 and 26, that the son of man shall be ashamed of me when he returns. Do, do you mean that Left Behind is, is just not a book series? Do you mean that, Sam, after some of the lives that we've lived, after some of us have been literally snatched from the pit of hell, we still have the nerve to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Father, forgive us. Let not your grace be wasted on us. The Bible says that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. He's not changed his mind about you. He continues to deliver us time and time again. What should have been judgment, he allowed his grace to intervene on our behalf. Who wants to be the person that has been the one where his grace has been determined that it's been wasted on you. I've saved you. I've healed you. I've delivered you time and time again. And you still refuse to be a witness to me. You still refuse to be the living epistle of the love of God. Over and over and over had I, had I orchestrated the car to go left when it should have gone right. I've, I've done all that I can do to get you to see that I love you. That people are tied to you. But you have still decided that you're more comfortable with the pleasures of the world than a commitment to Christ. Who wants to be that someone? Who wants to be that someone where your hand and things you touched used to prosper, but that no longer happens because of choices and decisions that you made? It's not too late. Don't let his grace be wasted on you. Have you forgotten who you used to be? Have you forgotten having to lie to cover up a lie? Have you forgotten how thankful you were for penicillin? Have you forgotten when he brought you through the last storm, the one that was sent to take you out, but you are still standing? Don't let his grace be wasted on me. Don't let his grace be wasted on me. Don't let his grace be wasted on me. I remember my born again experience it and I shared it in my book of promise kept. After that Bible study, that home cell meeting that night, and I had walked out laughing on the inside of me that they didn't even have no meat here. Anyway, I knew when I got to the door and closed it behind me, 
I knew that if I did not turn back, if I had rejected Christ that time, I would not have another opportunity again. And I, I stood on the on the porch in that apartment complex and I was frozen. It wasn't an audible voice that I heard. It was just a knowing on the inside of me. In a flash, I remembered all the past situations and roads that I had traveled. I remember all of the times, danger, Will Robinson, danger, Bill Robinson, danger, Will Robinson, kept coming up on the inside of me and I still kept going full speed ahead. I ignored it like we all do. On so many times, signs that said warning, road closed ahead, bridge out. In other words, you might have been able to take detours in your past. You may have been able to get away, away with it or so you thought. But I'm telling you, the road is closed ahead. Get off. There is still time. But on this night, that particular night, Sam West, and we will all have a night. We will all have a moment of accountability. But on that night... I knew that once I walked out that door, that if I did not return, I would not have another opportunity. I, I, I knew that I, I couldn't go down that road again. This time, there is not a detour. This is not a game. It's not about you. It is about your influence. I'm speaking to someone. It is about your future. It is about what your seed has been destined to do. This time will lead to a dead end. It will not turn out like you think. Don't let his grace be wasted on you. You've had multiple opportunities to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You thought it was you, that you was the boombam.com, but it was his grace on you. You thought it was your pedigree, your ability to bounce back during a crisis, but it was his hand upon you. It is about the call that was upon your mother or your father that now he needs you to fulfill. It's about what was prophesied about you when you were younger, you are destined to become a force to be reckoned with in the kingdom of God. That is why you are having the attacks. That is why the enemy has you fighting battles that don't matter. They have no kingdom or spiritual significance as opposed to fighting the ones that matter. That situation that has you stressed out, it's a distraction. How many people have done less than you and they are no longer here? This is not about you. You are still standing. You are still here. It is about the people that you are going to meet at the red light of your life that would need to know about Jesus Christ. This is not a competition. Our enemy does not play fair. There comes a point in time in all of our lives where we must take a stand for our eternal destiny. And shadow in your stronghold, Liberty Savard shares, your old nature is sharply aware that something has suddenly appeared on the scene that could be totally disastrous to the free reign that it has held in your life and it is going to respond vehemently. The enemy doesn't want you to know this. He doesn't want us to share this. He doesn't want you to know that the road that you are on, if you're not a born again believer, while smoothly paved, that once you are hooked and he has his snare on you, that once he cuts your brakes line, that it would turn into a winding, spiraling, downward road full of potholes and uneven spaces, one that will ultimately end in death. Don't let his grace be wasted on you. You've come too far. Look at you. Look at your family. Look what you have. You have fought too hard. You have sacrificed too much. Don't let his grace be wasted on you. God is love. The God who is love loves you. In other words, love and all that it is and all that it embraces and all that it encompasses. Love, comma, loves you. God is love. Love loves you. And there's nothing you can do about it. As we end this session, we cannot allow the choices of our past or the mistakes we have all made keep us in bondage. I shared a couple of situations with you so you would know that, okay, we missed it. Let's repent. Let's get back in the saddle because there are people tied to you. There are people that only you can reach that I would never have come across my path. Don't let people get you to think, oh, I woke up like this. No, you didn't wake up like that. Now, I saw you last night before you went to bed. You didn't look like that. So don't let people get you to think that their lives are perfect, that everything is fine. I remember my grandma, and I'm going to change some of the words. She said, boy, everybody boo-boo stank. Some of them just heights the window up for you. Got here. That's all that is. Stop complaining. I was like, okay, then. Thank you, grandma. But, but I, I learned a, a good point. Everybody has issues. Everybody has problems and everybody is in need of a savior. Don't fall to the pressure of someone else's image. We have to fight the good fight of faith, not only for our lives, but for our family, 
for our children and for our grandchildren. You are enough. Jesus said unto Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. You are enough. The book of Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It is not enough. You are enough. God loves you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. Open the door and walk through it and see the wonders of the mysteries that are hidden in his word. And as always, I'll leave you with this. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and dominion and power, both now and forever. Thank you for joining us. Please make sure you visit our website to watch previously recorded videos and let this opportunity be made unto your life tonight that there are people who need to hear that you were a survivor, that God is faithful, that he keeps his promises in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of What Sam Said. God bless you.